Welcome back to Open Line, talking about the death penalty. What are your views on the death penalty? We have with us Amy Lawrence with uh, Tennessee conservatives concerned about the death penalty. Bunch of calls. So let's just go right back to the phones and let's go to Walter. Hello, Walter. Yes. Go right ahead. What's on your mind? I'm going to ask you a few questions, please. Go right ahead. Uh, so, so, I'm going to. What do you think about them waiting on the people to get executed? What do you? Th your question is, what do you think about the long wait for an execution? Yes. Okay. Do you have another question? I. I'm just going to tell you this. I. I think that uh, people should be executed the way that they executed people, the way they, that they kill people. You think that would be the best way for there to be justice? Yes. Okay. All right. I appreciate that. And all right, let's talk about that. Um, he says, mm -hmm. you heard what he said. Right. If they shoot somebody, they should be shot. If they do something even worse to someone, that's how they should die. Um, it's this notion of justice. Right. And, and so what do you say when you hear that? Yeah, I mean, this is a very emotional issue, and it, and it should be. We're talking about innocent people whose lives have been taken. And, uh, you know, I get the pain. I don't personally understand it, nor could I ever understand what victims' family members go through. Um, but, but again, we're talking about how can we best prevent these types of crime in the future and how does the policy look like is it working for us and what I've found is it's it's not working for us um, and no matter you know I if I could see a state that could carry this out uh, with a hundred percent certainty and with um, with very few years I'd like to see it because I, I have yet to see a state who can carry this out perfectly his first question, Walter's first question was, what do you think about the amount of time? And here with, with Edmund Zagorski, we're talking 34 right. years. Yeah. And everyone uniformly would agree that's crazy. Right. I mean, that's an insane amount of time. I guess the alternative would be that you carry it out a year, six months. I mean, you, you, then you leave yourself open for all kinds of potentially innocent people to be right. put to death. So you either have quick justice, or maybe you could have quicker justice, or you have this long delayed justice. Right. And, and so you come down on the side, let's just put him in jail without parole forever. Right. Yeah, so the four, I believe the four people who were wrongfully convicted in Tennessee spent uh, 20 years before they were released after evidence of their innocence uh, came to light. And that's, you know, if, if we would have, executed quicker, that means those four people who were wrongfully convicted would have been dead. Um, and you see that in a lot of these exoneration cases, that it takes years. And that, and you also see that um, about 50% of death sentences are vacated. So without that appeals process, you're, you're dealing with a lot of potential for uh, wrongful executions. In an area where you can't take it back if you right. mess up. All right, let's go to David. Hello, David. Go hey, right Ben. Thanks for taking the call. Yes, sir. Go right ahead. Well, I'm going to tell you, I'm Republican, conservative. Yes, I'm all for it. Uh, I think uh, appeals process ought to be in there because, like you say, there might be uh, innocent people. The police might have missed the deal or they might have, uh, you know, they had to go through it again. But when you're straight up and you've been convicted, thirty something years on on, on death row is just un, it's un, it's unacceptable. It, it, there's no justice for the family and for the person that they murdered uh, to sit. They're alive, albeit in prison. Uh, they're still alive, and we're paying for it. And all, all these years and years, and he's not the only one that's been on there. Just about every one of them. The, the one that was just executed, I guess, in the 80s, this, this guy was in the 90s. Uh, yeah, all these years on death row that we're paying for, it's ridiculous. It needs to be, yes, quick, just, the appeals process has to be there to make sure they didn't overlook anything. But, 
it, it, it's it's just to me it's unacceptable to let somebody sit in there all this time and live off the taxpayer dollar when the family is still mourning the loss of the murder uh, of their family member. I just I just don't understand just the system. The uh, best one we got, I guess we got to deal with it. You just don't understand why I, it takes so long. But at the I, same I, time, I you're care. saying you want the appeals to go through, and so well, it is tough. There should be there should be that because there. There might be something that the detectives missed or the police missed that has to be gone over again. There are people that are on there, not that many. There are. But yeah, you need to have a little bit of an appeals thing, but an appeal that goes through 30 and 40 years is ridiculous. No, they need to, it, 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 it's all about courts of quick justice, and, and they have a, a right to a speedy trial, all that kind of thing. So, all right, you know, I. I yeah. yeah, well, thank, thank you. you. Thank All right, you. no, thank you very much. And, yeah, again, we're back to this right. length of time, which, in your argument, shows the system isn't working right. properly. Well, let me get back to the fact that there are people who have committed multiple murders who get life without parole and who don't get the death penalty. And, and what does that say about their victims and, and whether, you know, what do we... we we can't seek the death penalty for all 2,500 people who have committed murders for the last 40 years. So we're talking about who actually does get the death penalty. And what do you think it says? So what we've seen nationwide is that 2% of counties throughout the United States carry out the, major the vast majority of death sentences. So what we're talking about is it matters who your prosecutor is. It matters who your defense attorney is. It matters the color of the the race that your victim is. Those factors play a role into determining who gets the death penalty. And I wonder who are some of the wealthier people who have been executed. I mean, that is, you said it earlier. Um, if 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 you are poor, you're more likely to get the death penalty. I'm sure that argument. There's there's plenty of heft behind that argument. I'm sure there, you could make a solid argument with that. But how often is it carried out against somebody who is wealthy? And I don't I don't know the answer to that. Yeah, I, all I know is that it's the vast majority of people who um, are under the poverty line who are on death row. Let's go to Kaywood. Hello, Kaywood. Am I saying your name right, Kaywood? Yes, sir. Go yes, right sir. ahead. Okay, what's on your mind? Uh, I agree with uh, David there for a large part, but uh, in our Constitution, doesn't it say that, uh, that we're supposed to get a, a quick and speedy trial? Why shouldn't justice be uh, uh, as fast as a trial is? And this stuff about dragging, like the latest stuff, folks, something about the wealthy people, shouldn't they be uh, under the same scrutiny at the same time? Uh, a quick and speedy trial, quick and speedy justice. I know that there's a lot of things that should be looked at, but it shouldn't. And once they are convicted of a heinous crime of some sort, uh, shouldn't they? Uh, there's a process already in there uh, to where all the uh, appeals and everything go through. Shouldn't they uh, that, that be done just as quick as uh, the trial should be? I don't think uh, people that should uh, go through years and years of uh, prosecution and then I uh, don't think they should be allowed to sit in a jail cell and uh, have to lament about whatever they've done. That's cruel to them to start with. And uh, yeah, let, if, you, if you're convicted, uh, use your process of uh, uh, appeals and stuff. But get it done quickly and, and be done with it. So no, you, support, it you, support, you support the death penalty. You think it should be moved along more quickly? Yes, sir. I think it should. Uh, uh, it's not good for anybody to let them lay up there in jail and, uh, and let them worry about it, let every, the families of the victims uh, or whatever. The uh, question then becomes, are about you worried it. about people being convicted wrongly and then being no, executed? Yes, sir, that, that, that is that's true. Before they go to court, uh, both sides should have their ducks in a row, I guess you could say. And once a, uh, the verdict is handed down, they should expedite the verdict and not... Uh, let it lay around like this uh, gentleman's going to be 30 some years there. Uh, he should have been uh, done a long time ago. I'm sorry to say it that way, but you know, his uh, sentence should have been carried out uh, quite a while back. Uh, and this, uh, like I say, you get a quick, speedy trial, you should have uh, your justice delivered to you just as quick. 
All right, thank you. Okay, well, thank you for your call. And so we have a lot of calls now in support of the death penalty, agreeing that there are problems with how we carry it out. So mm -hmm. some of your arguments in opposition to the death penalty, they focus on some of these problems right. with how we carry it out. So here's someone saying, um, yeah, it's absurd. Somebody would sit out there for 34 right. years. We should just do it faster. Mm -hmm. and, and someone else saying, yeah, it's wrong, 34 years. We should do it faster. There should still be plenty of appeals. Right. Is there a way that we could fix the process that would then bring you back to your original position that you had a few years ago, that the death penalty was the appropriate thing? I'd, if if there was that, I'd like to see it. I have yet to see a state who can carry this out without any problems. Um, you know, the other thing that, that we're talking about here is this man, Edmund Zagorski, was sentenced back when life without parole wasn't an option. And therefore, there have been jurors, five jurors, I believe, who have come out and said, if that would have been an option, that's the option we would have gone with. And, um, you know, they've, they've spoken out about how traumatizing this has been as a juror for them. And corrections officials have also said how traumatizing this process is for them. So it's not just about executing the inmate, it's about all the people involved in this process. Yeah, there are jurors who have come out and said mm -hmm. that they don't want that penalty to be taken out. And that is kind of amazing, that the laws change, mm -hmm. and it does kind of speak to the the lottery nature of, of this death sentence, that it is, it, it's handed out to some, and it's not handed out equally to others. And here's a case where when this guy was convicted, there was no life without parole. Right. And, and then there's the case where he's been there 34 years and supposedly was a model prisoner, mm -hmm. um, which we hear a lot and, and whatever that means, but um, a lot changes in 34 years. So, you know, these are, these are arguments that keep coming up. Yeah, so I think what we're, what we're not advocating for is for this man to get out and for, um, you know, we're not advocating for leniency on him. What we're advocating for is just to give him life without parole. And really not, it's not just about this case, it's about just a failed policy. This is a bloated government program that has failed over and over again. And you, in this article you wrote, you use a different term. Instead of life without parole, you use death by incarceration. Yeah. And I think words have power and they, they motivate and move people. Why did you pick those words, death by incarceration? I'm a law and order type of person. I, I think that if you do a crime, you should do the time and that you should, that justice should be served. Um, so this, and I also don't believe in people getting out after a certain time. If these are serious cases, they should serve the time. Uh, I just don't believe that it's a good spending of our resources for this program. All right, we're going to take a break. If you are on the line, and I believe Barry, Charles, Kim, and others are on the line, so hold on. We will take a break and take your call right after this.